These are the top of that cutout would break right off. That lead would swing down hot, possibly uh, make quite an arc, or it would stay closed in. And where it's raining tonight, it would continue to track and light that pole on fire. <laughs> Alright guys, what's up? You probably can't see a thing because of my headlamp. We're out in the field right now on a treble call and I'm just waiting for my partner to come by. And I'll show you guys what we got here today. But you'll see a little better here now. Alright, so we've got a broken cutout. Man, there's not too many of these porcelain guys left out in the field. So up over my head here, we've got 12,470 volts. Uh, 7200 volts phase to ground. Now one of the first steps when you approach a pole, regardless of what you're doing, check your ties. You see at the top, these are preform steel ties. Sometimes they break, maybe a tree come down mid-span a while back and uh, breaks the ties, maybe it's just old. Either way, you get working on this pole and one of those ties are broken, you can be in a mess. Now. Also, you want to make sure none of your insulators are cracked, leaking, or broken. A uh, quick visual inspection usually is enough, but something that will indicate a leaking insulator pretty quick, and I've shown this in a few videos now, is that fractural wood burning in the pole. All right, we're just on a call, guys. Um, I wanted to show you this real quick because the customer said there was somebody here last week, and they figured it was probably a squirrel or a bird. So they refused the cutout and closed it back in. Um, they said they heard a bang, the fuse blew again. So I was off a couple days last week. Now, one's instincts, uh, at first if they couldn't find nothing, uh, they, to assume it would be a, a bird or a squirrel and simply close it back in. But in this situation here, if you look at the top of the pole, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Right around the cutout bracket, you see what looks like fractal wood burning on the pole itself. Uh, if you want to go back and check out, I got an actual video about all well, that touches on fractal wood burning. But the fact that that cutout bracket is hanging there loose for one, and you got some fractal wood burning on the pole, is a pretty good indication that that cutout's cracked. So if I were to simply refuse and close that cutout, one of two things would happen. Either the top of that cutout would break right off, that lead would swing down hot, possibly uh, make quite an arc, or it would stay closed in. And where it's raining tonight, it would continue to track and light that pole on fire. So before going any further, I got help on the way right now. I actually opened the side lines so that primary is not energized right now. Um, while in normal circumstances you could climb that pole, change that cutout while it's energized. If you got a, if you suspect cracked porcelain, uh, definitely want to open the line, especially if you're on hooks up there. So, so in this particular case, that cutout was cracked, obviously. Now before it actually fell apart and blew the fuse. It was tracking through that steel bracket into the wooden pole looking for ground. Now the first ground it would have found would have been that copper lead going to the butt of the lightning arrester as well as that bolt going right through the pole to the grounded case of the transformer. So that's why you kind of have the, the in and the out burn marks. So upon my arrival, the cutout was already open, um, it was completely broken in pieces. The top half was dangling from that lead, uh, energized 7200 volts. And I checked in with my dispatcher, let him know that I was at this transformer pole. There's another guy on his way. He should be here probably within the next 10 minutes or so. So I can't go hands on any of that equipment. 
until he gets here. But in order to eliminate that hazard, we, we clip that lead with the dangling portion of the cutout off. You can see it hanging. Oh, that's the top part, that shiny metal piece. And uh, we cut that with our six foot insulated cutters. Now these guys here are tested. Spires June 2021. These are tested 100,000 volts per foot. Along with that and our rubber gloves, we were able to safely clip that lead. And now everything from the cross arm down is isolated. So pretty easy fix. As soon as he shows up, we're gonna rip that cutout off, rip that lightning raster off, uh, put a new lead on and get the power back on. Then we're gonna head home for the night. So pretty standard job guys. Um, broken cutouts, broken insulators are a common problem regardless of where in the country you work. Uh, most of them over the years have been changed out. There's a few stragglers picking around, this being one of them. So uh, most important thing guys, when you're coming up to these poles, you see you see the immediate hazard, the broken cutout, the job. But don't rush right into things and attack that cutout without first checking everything else in the pole. You have to do a complete scene survey, spot any hazards before you go to work. Once you spot those hazards, you control the hazards, put any measures in place you can to control them. And uh, I should mention too, when I spoke with my dispatcher, our conversation was once I get up in the air and get a closer look, if I didn't feel that it was safe to clip that lead with the hotline cutters, um, we're gonna head down the road and open the whole line. It would have knocked out. Oh, we're right close to the sub, so I think there's three or 400 customers on this line. Another thing I should mention, see that over there? That house has their lights on. I'm not sure if you can hear it or not. There's a generator running. So I would assume that he has a proper transfer switch and that there's no back feed into that triplex. However, you can never assume in our line of work. So before we go into the high voltage thing, we're gonna put a set of grounds on the secondary side. I went over this in a video before. We pretty much got three options. We can disconnect the secondary leads these guys right here, one, two, two outside live ones. Um, we can short them out. That way, if there is a generator back feeding, it's not gonna last too long. Or we can go back to the house and pull the meter. See, what happens is that generator putting in the 120 on this guy, 120 on this guy, goes backwards through the windings and comes out 7200 on this guy. All right, guys, that's it. I'm gonna uh, head down and charge my headlamp for 10 minutes while I'm waiting for my partner. So thanks for checking in. Work safe, guys. We'll see you around.